Hello and welcome to Cam's Can Project. A solar air furnace is a way to collect the heat from solar energy and use it to heat your house. There are, me are different types of furnaces. There are expensive made ones or there is a cheap version that you can make. A solar can uh, furnace works by the sun heating cool air coming from the channel from the bottom and then heating it in the can and then shooting it out the top and then using it for heat. The problem that we're trying to figure out is what is the best way to make a solar can uh, furnace more efficiently. To help solve this problem, I went online, watched videos on YouTube, and got some cans and started playing around with designs. After playing around with the cans, we had four top designs that we picked that we were going to use to test our hypothesis. We picked uh, our top four designs, and the first one is um, the cross on the bottom with the top open. And next one is uh, the triangle on the bottom with the top open. And we had the four circles in the bottom with the, with the top cut open. And then we had just one with the top, the pop top open. And there's all the four designs on the bottoms. After picking the four designs, we thought that the X would do the best out of them. After we picked our designs, we siliconed four cans together to make identical towers. After we siliconed the cans together with a high heat silicone, we then used a high heat black paint to paint them. The high heat silicone took about 24 hours to dry and the paint that we used took about a day. After our uh, towers were ready, we set up our test. When we set the cans up, we lined them next to each other, keeping them apart so that the airflow could flow underneath them. After we set up the cans, we put four high heat temperatures inside the can without touching the sides or the metal and then put two temperature uh, thermometers on the outside for the ambient temperature. Every 10 minutes I collected the temperatures and the data and recorded it. After uh, collecting all my data I then put the data into Excel and use, I used an Excel equation to calculate all the temperatures for each minute. After getting all that data, I then added a column to it called actual temp that I got from weathersource.com using our zip code. After putting all my data in the Excel, I then graphed all the data for the towers the temperatures in the towers and the actual temperatures on the outside. In this graph we showed that uh, the actual temperature is the on the bottom that actually is pretty steady and the ambient temperature is the one at the bottom that goes up and down and basically these are the temp on the top those are the temperatures of the cans and uh, this is actually too much data to comprehend so we split them up and compare them by tower. On the graph, the outside temperatures are about 30 degrees less than the temperatures in the cave. In this graph, it shows the temperature differences between the uh, triangle with the open top and then the tower with the pop top with the triangle. In this graph, we can see that the red one is the highest, which is tower 3, which is the pop top. When you blend 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, you can see that 
4 and 5 are more efficient in holding the heat. In this graph, you can see that the red, which is tower 5, which is the design with the open top with the four holes, has done the best. After we finished the graph, we went back to the data and checked all our uh, numbers to make sure they were right by figuring out the area underneath the curb. We did that by totaling up all our temperatures and getting an average. In conclusion, Tower 5 with the four holes designed it the best with it being at 93 degrees. Tower 2 did the second, no, Tower 3 did the second, uh, second best, which was the pop top with the triangle design at 88 degrees. Uh, Tower 4 did the third best with it being at 87 degrees with the X design. And last but not least, Tower 2, which is the open top, had 86 degrees with it being at last. In comparison to the outside temps, all the temperatures were higher than 30 degrees, but the best was 38 degrees. Uh, my hypothesis was wrong. Um, Tower 4, which was the X design, actually did the third best, whereas um, I thought it would do the top best. The reason why Tower 5 did the best was, in all, at the start of the test, Tower 5 went shooting up, and when all the other towers went down, Tower 5 stayed up and stayed at a continuous temperature, as you can see at the red line. The reason why towards the end it started dipping down then started going down was at that time of the year where we had the test set up, uh, it, there was probably a lot of, it was starting to get shady and then it got a lot of shade and the temperature went down. A suggestion that I have, when you do this test, do it only in the winter and when you do it, do it in a spot that all around gets a lot of sun so you can get pretty even results. The reason why you have to do the test in the winter because when you use the solar air heater you're mostly going to be using it in the winter to warm your house and keep your house warm. Thank you for watching my uh, video. Good luck with your solar furnace.